Hello everyone, this is Colin here. Not too long ago, I saw an interesting video in which a gentleman uh, for a project was attempting to 3D print a pressure vessel. Uh, he didn't have a lot of luck getting it to seal very well, and his design wasn't really optimized for holding high pressures, despite that being something of his goal. He also was testing the pressure vessel with butane, which made things a bit more exciting than they needed to be. So I've actually printed quite a few uh, parts that are either gas or liquid tight or both, and I figured, oh, what the hell? Why don't I 3D print a purpose-built pressure vessel and test it to failure and see how it goes? So let's see how it went. All right, let's start this off by doing some calculations. This spreadsheet here has a lot going on. Uh, the important parts for the purposes of, of this little project is the hemispherical head stress calculation here, the hoop stress calculation for the shell segment that's here, and then this materials table with uh, tensile strengths. And specifically, we're looking at the ABS 3D printed in X and Y axis and ABS in Z axis. One comment on that is uh, there is a difference in strength based off the orientation of the print, with the Z axis being much weaker than the X and Y axis. And this data came from a spec sheet from one of the vendors that I buy filament from. <clears throat> so, on to the calculation. For the purposes of this little proof of concept experiment, um, I wanted to uh, choose a relatively thin wall thickness for two reasons. One, I'm not actually using this for anything besides this demonstration. So there's no reason to build a super heavy pressure vessel uh, because I don't need a super heavy pressure vessel. The other reason is I'm going to test this pressure vessel to failure. Um, we're going to do a couple tests with it. And so I need it to, to be weak enough that I can use readily available equipment to pressurize it and then pressurize it to failure. And so uh, I settled on a wall thickness of 1.2 millimeters, which is um, effectively three perimeters on, in the XY axis at a 0.4 millimeter nozzle size, which is pretty standard. A lot of people use that, and three perimeters is certainly uh, the minimum amount needed to, you know, get a, a robust wall. So we've got three perimeters with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And then I just varied the radius until I got um, pressure values uh, that would, would give me a, you know, a reasonable pressure that was high enough to be appreciable, but also low enough to be testable. And so I've, I've done that already, I've done the iterations. And what I've come up with is uh, a failure pressure somewhere between 108 and 104 pounds. PSI, which if you're uh, designing this to something like an ASME or a similar standard, the safety factor or the design margin would be something like 1.5 to 3.5, depending on, um, you know, conditions and such. Obviously, that's an oversimplification. I'm sure there's a, uh, a mechanical engineer angrily typing comments as I, <laughs> as I say this. But anyway, with, uh, with, with ABS and uh, with this size of the pressure vessel, which is obviously quite, quite small, we would anticipate a, a working pressure, um, a, you know, a long-term usable working pressure between 30 and 70 pounds, depending on the design margin. And of course, when we test it to failure, we would expect it to fail somewhere around 105 pounds. Now let's move on to the actual model. Okay, here is our model that is ready for slicing and actually already sliced. 
As we mentioned in the design phase, the whole idea here was to have a, a manageable and testable pressure rating <coughs> and that we were going to go for a 1.2 millimeter wall thickness, that is three perimeters. So as you can see, that is uh, exactly what we did here. Uh, we've got three perimeters on the shell and as it tapers to the heads, uh, it maintains that same 1.2 millimeter thickness. A couple notice, uh, notable items here. Uh, of course, at the top we have our uh, one quarter inch nominal pipe thread uh, fitting here so that we can uh, connect a, a pressure gauge and a filling and testing manifold. On the bottom, we have a skirt and uh, the skirt's here for a couple reasons. Um, as this is uh, an ABS print in particular, but any 3D print um, where you have a, a very uh, shallow angle on the overhang, as you would have at the bottom of the hemisphere here, <coughs> the underside of the hemisphere, would have very poor print quality, and quite aside from, from not looking good, um, that would actually result in the 1.2 millimeter bottom head being weaker than it should be, uh, at least weak, weaker than an equivalent head printed without that overhang. So what we did here is we added the skirt and went to our print settings and we actually added a couple extra perimeters here. Uh, that way for that uh, low angle overhang, it actually has more layers so that we definitely have at least 1.2 millimeters of good print layers on the bottom. <clears throat> Same goes for the top here. Um, you can kind of see as I'm in this, this blue uh, ring here as we move the slicer bar out, that's an unsupported um, overhang as well. So the quality there on the interior of the vessel, which we won't actually be able to see, is going to be poor and it'll be weaker as a result. So for, so for the same reason as we put the skirt on the bottom, we put this kind of uh, free pad on the top and those extra perimeters there will reinforce that area where the print is going to be weaker by default. Uh, so that's the, the logic on the, the skirt on the bottom and that free pad on the top. Another thing that's worth mentioning here is the seam. The default for most uh, modern slicers is to do an aligned seam and the problem with that on a cylinder or in this case a, uh, a sphere for the top and bottom heads is that you end up with a line basically running down the wall of the vessel. Well that would definitely be a weak point uh, in the design and would be the point where it fails so we switched to a random seam for this print. Okay. As you can see, our 3D printed pressure vessel is finished. Uh, it came out pretty good, except for the uh, random seam here that we'll, uh, we put in there deliberately to avoid an aligned seam related weak spot. But our finish is good and we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step is to seal this because 3D prints, at least straight off the printer, usually are not gas or liquid tight. There's gaps uh, in places, especially around seams uh, in the layers, and they won't hold liquid or gases. Uh, so the way we're going to fix this is we are going to vapor smooth it. Uh, acetone can be vapor, or ABS can be vapor smoothed with acetone, and that's what we're going to do. And what that'll do is that will kind of dissolve the outer layer of plastic here, fill in all the gaps, and then when the uh, acetone boils off, uh, you're left with a smooth, glossy finish um, that has no holes in it, and uh, it's actually a little bit stronger that way um, than it is with a normal, just regular print. So we're going to go ahead and vapor smooth this. We finished vapor smoothing it with acetone. As you can see, we've got a nice glossy finish now, and that should uh, 
seal up any gaps in the layers that could allow liquid or vapor to escape. And so now we're gonna set this up um, with a manifold for filling and pressure it up. We are out here in the shop, so you're gonna have to excuse the noise. Um, but anyway, we've got our pressure vessel hooked up to a manifold here where we've got a valve for isolation and we got a pressure gauge. And as you can see, I've actually uh, put a little pressure on it already. And we've hooked it up to a hydro test rig. So we're gonna pump it up to uh, 50 pounds, because as I mentioned before, depending on the uh, safety factor that you're using, uh, this vessel should be good for somewhere between uh, 30 and 70 pounds. So we're gonna split the difference. We're gonna pump it up to 50 pounds and uh, we're gonna hold it there for a week and see how it does. So let's go ahead and pump it up. And there you have it. That is, there's a lot closer in this gauge here, but that is as near as I can tell to 50 pounds of pressure. So we're gonna, I'll only put a little bit more in there. I think we've got a little seeping there. There we go. So we're at 50 pounds. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take apart the manifold here, isolate it, and we'll sit this in a bucket for a week. Well, it has been a week since we put our uh, pressure vessel in the shop with hydro test water in it and pumped it up to 50 pounds and this shop is still dry and we've got 50 pounds in there. So uh, we're going to call the first part of the test uh, a success and now move on to the more exciting bit where we hook this back up to the hydro tester and we crank up the pressure and keep cranking up the pressure until we have a failure. So let's go do that. Okay. We are out here in the backyard well away from anything that could be damaged for obvious reasons. And we've got our pressure vessel hooked up to the hydro test pump. And we've got uh, the camera rolling. So we're gonna go ahead and start pumping it up until we see some form of failure. Probably a leak or maybe a little bit of a, a fitting stripping out on the, uh, on the pressure vessel here. So let's go ahead and start applying more pressure. And if you recall, uh, we were expecting a failure somewhere around 104 pounds. So we'll pause there and see how it's holding at that point. Well, it looks like we've met our design uh, design maximum, which is kind of impressive. I didn't think we'd get past that. So we'll keep applying pressure until it goes. shoot I'm gonna need a bigger pressure gauge well as you saw in the last clip we ran into a bit of a technical difficulty there in that our uh, pressure gauge uh, was maxed out at about 150 pounds 160 pounds and our pressure vessel hadn't failed yet which is quite impressive so we've modified our rig to remove the gauge T and uh, we will rely on the hydro test uh, the hydro testers pressure gauge which goes up to a much more significant pressure. Well, we're starting at about 50 pounds. Uh, on this gauge the red is pounds 
and, and that's what we're going to be watching here to see when we fail. So that's about 100 pounds. About 150 there. Hundred pounds. That's about a two. Not quite there. Two fifty. Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of drop. Oh, there it goes. Well, that was quite the interesting outcome. Uh, we made it, after reviewing the footage, we made it very nearly up to 250 pounds before the pressure vessel catastrophically failed. Uh, somewhat, unex or somewhat expectedly, it failed pretty much along the shell here. Um, as I think I mentioned earlier on, we've added these repads for the threaded fitting uh, and for the uh, bottom overhang which effectively reinforces the, the bottom heads. So it's somewhat not surprising that the, the failure point was on the shell. However, we do see some interesting stuff and hopefully you can see this on the camera. It didn't fail along a single layer line. Uh, you actually can see several jagged edges where it you know, tears through and jumps through a layer on both halves here. And so that tells us that um, you know, our, our Z-axis was quite a bit stronger uh, after vapor smoothing than it otherwise would have been. In fact, the failure point at 250 pounds is more than double the expected 108 pound value. Uh, so clearly doing the, the vapor smoothing um, the way I did it makes a huge difference in the, in the strength of the final vessel, um, far in excess of what the original material uh, specifications would indicate. Anyway, uh, that was quite a bit of fun. And uh, if you have any other ideas that you think would make a entertaining video, drop me a line. Thanks for watching.